This segment brought to you by Ting. It's time once again to check port 110. This week, Dennis writes, I came across something the other day that I found really strange. If I transfer all the cookies from one machine to another, and the machine from which I do the transfer has a Facebook session, which is logged in, then on the new machine, the user is automatically logged in. It may be just me, but isn't this sort of a security flaw? I know I should write write to Facebook and tell them, but I also figure that if I do, I will probably just be one of the million emails that they get and maybe I don't get into trouble. Well, I just wanted to share this knowledge with somebody that I believe won't use it for evil. Aha! Well, actually, it can be used for evil. Interesting. Uh, what Dennis here has stumbled upon is just basically the whole main concept behind what we would lovingly call a sidejacking attack. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've talked about these in the past. Uh, you can look on Hack5 for a tool called uh, uh, Ferret and Hamster. Uh, that's a pretty cool tool that basically like sniffs for cookies. You did a segment on Fire Sheep. Yes. Uh, there's now Sheep Droid or Droid Sheep, one of those. Droid Sheep. Yep. Yeah. And basically all of these are, are take advantage of the just the, the the inherent nature of the way that a magic token or a cookie works. And that is if your authentication, your session authentication is um, maintained by a little file that's on that computer and then a corresponding little file that's on the server. Well, all you have to do is steal the one on that computer, and then boom, you can spoof being the other one. And, mm -hmm. and so that's the basic premise of how it works, and that's basically the premise of what um, Kaz does with his, uh, his latest um, uh, P2P ADB. He was showing, he did a demo at DerbyCon showing how if he gets this token off of your Android phone, he can then just copy, use that magic to token, which is actually just like a series of numbers in a URL, oh. paste it into like a browser, you know, a, uh, use an incognito session so you don't yeah. already have another Google account session going on, and then suddenly you're logged in as that person. Uh, and you don't need to know their password, and that's, that's pretty much the idea behind it. it and, and same with when we were talking about pass the hash. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like this is forget your password, this is the token that authenticates you, this is this your is session. The authentication, yeah. And so there are some ways where you could mitigate that a bit, and but really the onus is on the user. So on the web at least, the way that it works is that you'll get a cookie file. Remember in the 90s people were like, cookies are bad. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you get your cookie <laughs> stolen, they didn't need your password, they, they're already logged in as you. Um, and, and with most sites at least, you can't like change their password because you need to know the password before you right. can change it. Yeah. As Cause points out, you can always like add a new secret question, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, the point is of cookies though is that for developers, when you write an, a web application to do cookies, you specify um, with an absolute date when the cookie will expire. And so some web developers are really lazy and they're like, yeah, my cookie expires in 2080. You know, mm -hmm. um, so you don't need to worry about it until way after the person is dead. Yeah. Um, or you could have your cookie expire sooner, or if you're smart as on the user side, maybe you just don't check the box that says keep me signed in. Mm -hmm. By checking that box yeah. that says keep me signed in, sure, it's really convenient. You don't have to log into Facebook, Amazon, whatever you use all the time. Um, it's kind of like you just found out yeah. a security flaw. Yep. Uh, in fact, we had this conversation, Dennis went ahead and continued. So Dennis continued on and said, sure, but shouldn't there be some like mechanics to prevent it from being so simple, like checking the session against browser as an OS fingerprints? Maybe a check on the IP and at least a check that makes sure that two computers aren't using the same sh session at the same time. Now, I actually get an email from Facebook whenever I get another login from another place, mm -hmm. which is something that I signed up for, but you have to opt in for it. Yeah, and if you're uh, a Gmail user, you may notice at the bottom of the screen it actually shows you like what last IP address, session. yeah, what uh, the last sessions yeah. were. Um, so it's it's nice as if you're really adamant about like mm -hmm. if you're very focused on your security, you may notice that. But the thing is, there's no really easy way to say like, oh well, Shannon's always logging into Facebook on Firefox, and her screen resolution is usually 1024 by 768 because she's still rocking a 17-inch CRT. Um, and so if suddenly she logs in using Chrome on a different resolution, it's a different person. No, no it's not going to work. No, it could work. be my laptop. It could be whatever. 
yeah, it, that could be the case. Or also, if say I'm an attacker, mm -hmm. okay, then I just steal your cookie and I find out your resolution and I find out what browser you're using yeah. because the browser reporting is just in the agent data that you're sending to the site. Mm -hmm. You can make Firefox look like it's Chrome, make it look like it's IE, make it look like it's NCSA Mosaic if you wow. want to. So um, I, I think that you're on the right path of thinking like, hey, there should be more factors of authentication and I think that's what you're saying. Um, but I don't think like what your resolution or your OS or your browser is, maybe your IP address, that could be like a layer. But again, you know, uh, if somebody's compromised your machine, they could just be proxying through your network right. anyway. Yeah, so that, so I think like the only good way that I've seen to do it is like with a YubiKey or mm -hmm. using, you know, using Google Authenticator app. Yeah. 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 Because I feel like that's at least a second factor mm -hmm. that's not as easily spoofable as, um, you know, your, your browser or your OS. <laughs> but yeah, you're, you're on the right track. And so thanks for bringing that up. That's really funny though, that you're like, you're just, you know, oh, I'm doing somebody a solid and backing up their machine and putting it on the new machine. Then said, oh, dude, you know, yeah. and it's like, once again, convenience. <laughs> You guys have probably already heard us talking about Ting for the past few months. You know I love it. I've got my two Ting modems at the same time. And I'm so happy to see that a lot of Hack5 viewers have already taken advantage of their customer first approach to the cell market. If you're not familiar with Ting, it's a new service that brings clarity, usability, and big savings to mobile phone users. So they've got one really simple plan. It's called megabytes, minutes, and text messages. All of them build separately. So if you use more than you just pay for the next tier. There's no ridiculous overage fees. And if you use less, you're actually credited the difference. How awesome is that? No BS. Check it out at ting.com slash hack5. You're going to love their online savings calculator. And uh, if you're ready to get started, get this. Just for being a Hack5 fan, $75 off your first month service. For the Technolist photo of the week. This week's Technolist photo of the week comes from Peer, and maybe it was supposed to be Peter, what was spelled incorrectly or something, in the Netherlands. Maybe it's Peer? Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce Netherlandian. <laughs> Netherlandian? Yeah, Is I, that how you I, say don't, it? I don't speak African Pe either. Peer? Peer? Well, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. Uh, he said, my Technolist photo of the week is all about Wi-Fi. In the Netherlands, we have Wi-Fi on almost every train, except for this time where I was on a local ISP. Ha <laughs> ha. You can be can't believe how many people actually connected to the FBI van. Don't connect unsafe internet. Not my internet, and so on. I had a lot of fun on a two-hour train ride. You can send your photos over to feedback at hack5.org if you have something awesomely cool to share with us with the subject line, Technolust. Yeah, that, that's a good thing to point out. So as, as Dennis has mentioned, there's convenience. And as Pierre has uh, mentioned, there's human stupidity. Yeah. So thanks for reminding us Don't about connect. this. Don't connect. How, why do you don't connect? Come on. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if there's just like some OSs that are just like, ooh, open Wi-Fi. Let's try it. You yeah, know? seriously. It's all about the vendor Not implementation. Not my computer. So last week's trivia question was: NVIDIA's SLI stand for Scalable Link Interface. What were the words that made up 3DFX's original SLI acronym? And the answer was the scan line interface. Oh right. Instead of scalable. Now scalable I can't remember, and somebody's going to have to email in and remind me, or I'll just Google it after this. But the NVIDIA, or NVIDIA, the mm -hmm. 3DFX stuff, which is like near and dear to my heart, the Voodoo 2, man, you gotta oh, get two yeah. Voodoo 2s, yeah. right? Um, did they do even and odd lines of processing? Like one mm. video card would do odd lines, one would do even? Or did they split the screen in the middle and take the top half and bottom? I don't remember uh, yeah, I don't what remember the trick was, one. but I remember it was something silly like that where they were just like, ah, we're just gonna do this, but, you know? I think it was way like ahead or of their time. Yeah. I think that's right, but yeah, yeah. Definitions, whatevs. So this week's question is, what is the code name of NVIDIA's desktop caliber ARM chip that runs in some data centers? Ooh. Mm. Gotta love me some ARM chips. Aren't mm. you having fun with those ARM next chips. week, too? Yes, I am. I'm so excited about that. So anyway, I won't tell you quite yet. Answer over at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some swag out of my bag. Yay. From DerbyCon, actually.
Hell yeah, we got Derby yeah. swag. Oh, yeah. uh, from also, remember for you guys. And all sorts we, of uh, we totally value your feedback. Feedback at hack5.org. It's where you can send us, you know, what you'd like to see on the show, what you think of the show, and all of those other things about the show. Or you don't even have to email us about the show. You can tell us about what's in your refrigerator that's gone bad. I mean, really <laughs> anything. Don't. Yeah, please don't tell us about that. Yeah, kind subject of stuff. line no, no TMI. Pictures, no pictures of mold, moldy fish or anything. <laughs> no, I'm the one clicking the TMI emails with the JPEG attachment. Oh. Can't unsee that one. And don't forget, you can always follow everything we do over at hack5.org slash follow. You'll find all the links over to all the social networks over on the website. And if you like what we're doing and want to support us directly, uh, head over to hakshop.com. That's where we've got the hacker gadgets and the fun stuff that we talk about and play with the fun toys. And oh, yes. All about toys. We always have good time shipping that right over there, actually. Yay. And with, with all that, of that said, I'm going to remind you guys to uh, trust, um, trust your... Uh, Technolist, that's one. Go on, do that. Yeah, trust mm -hmm. your technolist. Well, in comparison to Shannon only. I look glue. Yeah. Props to Borean from Germany. Wie geht's, mein Freund? In lols. Did you call, just call him a friend? I called him a girl friend. Whatever white balance this is using, we should be using on the other two, because it looks good. It's good. We should have cat days. Yeah. Catter day. like a catter day at work? We should have a catter day. Well, catter once a month, day. just catter day. Yeah. Yeah. Where we just have a cat. And we just hold up cat. Okay, or we'll bring, bring a Starbucks by. She'd just be like laying here going, She'd just piss Bye. on everything. I want, I want the glamour shot for this one. Ready? Except I got wispies like crazy. What is that? What is that? Yeah, I know. Paul, hit record. You're not hitting record fast enough. I'm a person that needs a haircut. Stop spawn camping the record button, Paul.